Well, greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all so very much for all of your comments that you sent to us, all of your prayers that are uh, rising up to heaven in behalf of Judy and me. We have been very ill, and as I said in my last video, I am so thankful for your prayers. And as we continue to recover, we're so very, very grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love and concern for us. Thank you for your encouragement for us. I want to thank you for all, all the encouragement that you sent to us through your emails and your comments. And we're just so grateful to you. Uh, we love you all. And we're so very appreciative of your love for us in Christ. You show yourselves to be true Christians because you truly love your brothers and sisters. You truly care. And I'm always so thankful to see you responding when other people are asking for prayer and you send your comments saying, we are praying for you. Thank you for being the loving and godly bunch of brothers and sisters that you are. We love you so much and so thankful for you. I recently got this comment from a brother and a sister. They said this, the USA is clearly marching towards dictatorship. Yes, we're hearing that from many of you that are more and more aware every day how close we're getting to the fact that this United States of America is heading for dictatorship very soon now, and it will affect the entire world as we believe Bible prophecies are being fulfilled in our day and our time. And it is incredible. It's amazing to see it happening. It's, it's just, it boggles the mind. But it's true. Uh, we're hearing from more and more people every day. I get more and more comments and emails every day from those of you talking about how you really realize now that it's, this is really hitting home. This is really coming home. This is very near now and very close to home. And uh, we are hearing from people in the news media talking a lot about this now and talking about the seriousness of this situation. The latest polls that are being done all across the country by every uh, type of uh, pollster, whether it's a media pollster, NBC, CBS, uh, ABC, uh, Time, uh, Newsweek, uh, or polls being done by CNN or Fox, polls being done by universities, colleges. Uh, these latest polls are showing that Trump is surging ahead in all the polls. He's ahead of Biden in one-to-one -one matchups. In a recent poll, it found that Trump leads Biden in five of the six most important battleground states. These are the states where the election is decided, where it goes one way or the other, and all of the uh, electoral votes, of course, go to whoever wins that state. And uh, he is, Trump is beating Biden by margins of four to 10 percentage points among registered voters in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. These are all swing states. Only one swing state held a narrow, uh, did Biden hold a narrow two point uh, lead in Wisconsin. But in the other battleground states that will decide who wins the uh, electoral college vote and who wins the election, uh, Trump is ahead in five of those six states. And he's, he's considerably ahead. Biden is just barely ahead in the sixth state of Wisconsin. But Trump is ahead sometimes up to 10 percentage points in some of these battleground states. So according to the polls, Trump will win the popular vote and he will overwhelmingly win the majority of the electoral college vote. Uh, and he has what we call the big mo right now, uh, the momentum. 
uh, Donald Trump is definitely gaining and Biden is losing as days and weeks and months go by. Even among Democrats, it's recognized that Joe Biden has turned out to be the worst possible candidate to oppose Donald Trump in the 2024 election. But Biden is running and he's determined to run. And if his health holds up and he's able to continue to run, he's running and he's in this race and he's going to get the Democratic nomination, no doubt about it. Uh, and yet, uh, while he's talking out on the campaign trail about how inflation is coming down, that's his big theme because it's inflation that has killed him. It's inflation that has just killed Joe Biden. Uh, price is just going up, 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 up. But the problem is, while he talks about inflation is coming down, the fact is the prices are still up. For three years, they've gone up, 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 up. And so just because inflation is finally slowing down, the prices are still sky high. And that's what the American people are feeling. And that's what they're thinking about. And that when they look at the economy, they look at their pocketbook, they look at the, at, at the everyday economic situation in their household, they realize they have really lost a lot of ground in the past three years. And of course, it's been because of this, this uh, massive inflation. Prices have just gone up, up, up. We can't, we still can't believe it. When we go to the store, uh, when we buy groceries, when we buy the things we have to have, it's, it just amazes people uh, how prices are so high. They talk about like, well, prices only went up 50% or whatever. I tell you, uh, I don't know about you, but I've just seen it. Prices have doubled. Uh, in the past few years, the prices of things uh, have gone up sometimes three times what they used to be. It, it's amazing. It just amazes me. And uh, this, these prices are not coming down. Inflation may be slowing down, but the prices are not dropping back down. And so people are hurting. And, uh, and Joe Biden is very unpopular because of that. And uh, it's because also of his age, people say, you know, look, we look at this man, we can see that he obviously can't hold up uh, again, many more years. I mean, we don't really know uh, how he's going to look a year from now. A year from now is November of 2024 when the election is held. He will be uh, 82 next November and uh, the election will be held. And we don't know how uh, he's going to look a year from now, but we know how he looks right now. And uh, I mean, I'm no spring chicken and don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I don't, you know, you, you can't blame anybody for getting old, but the fact is he is old. And the fact is he looks old and uh, he doesn't look like he's uh, doing real well. And so uh, this is just the reality of the situation. It couldn't have been a worse uh, situation for uh, the Democrats running against uh, Trump, but uh, it couldn't be uh, more in keeping with what we expect to happen. We expect Trump is going to win this election. We expect that he is going to go on to fulfill all the Bible prophecies about the Antichrist. And we are convinced that he is the rising Antichrist and that he's going to come on the world stage and do things uh, that the Bible says he will do. And uh, he's already talking about doing those very things. Uh, independent candidates are going to be running also in this race. Uh, RFK Jr. is going to get a lot of votes. Joe Manchin will get votes. Jill Stein will get votes. Cornell West uh, will get votes. And they will be drawing votes away from Joe Biden for the most part. Uh, these are uh, Jill Stein and uh, Cornell West. And uh, and uh, these these. Uh, independents are for the most part going to take votes away from joe biden rfk jr may take votes away from trump and biden uh, but we'll see uh, the democrats are saying look here's our campaign strategy we're going to run on this democracy is on the line you if you vote for trump you're voting for a dictatorship if you vote for uh, joe biden you're going to save the democracy but the problem is with their democratic uh, line, you see, they've lost their credibility because they have been pursuing their political opponent through legal means. And uh, 
uh, you know, people are seeing that Trump is being prosecuted day by day by day by these people. Uh, and people are looking at that and saying, well, you're the one that's destroying democracy. You're trying to stop your political opponent through legal means, a political persecution, uh, a political prosecution that is a persecution and that is uh, going against uh, the American way of democracy. And so, so the Democrats are being blamed by at least half of the country for doing what they say that that Trump will do, destroying democracy. And so that's the way the, these voters are looking at it. And uh, more and more people are getting on board with Trump. You know, if Trump had gone off quietly into the night after 2020, after he lost the election, if he had just shut his mouth and went off and played golf like most presidents do and just, just gone into retirement, Let's be honest. Let's not lie to ourselves. Let's not kid ourselves. All of these legal hassles would not have come upon him. If he had done that, people would say, let him go. You know, just leave him alone. Let him go off into the night and, and just, you know, forget about him. But he didn't. He decided, no, I'm, I'm going to run again. I'm going to be reelected in 2024. And so because he made that decision and because he's campaigning and because he's looking strong in the polls and the, you can see he's definitely going to get the GOP nomination because of that, they wouldn't leave him alone. They said, no, we've got to stop this man. We've got to stop him. We've got to stop him from winning the election. We've got to stop him from being president again. And so that's why they came after him. And it's obvious. I mean, I know it's a Democratic talking point to say that, oh, but it's the Republicans who are testifying against him in these trials. That's just a talking point. Let's face it. There wouldn't be any trials to begin with if uh, the Democrats weren't saying, look, we got to stop this man. If they weren't the ones pursuing this thing, there wouldn't be any Republicans being called to the stand to make uh, give testimony. So the fact of the matter is you can see that where this is coming from and voters can see where this is coming from and and uh, that makes uh, the democrats lose credibility in their argument that they're trying to save democracy you know i agree with the democrats in that uh, i agree with the democrats that trump is is the threat to democracy i agree with that but the democrats just shot themselves in the foot whenever they decided that the, their strategy should be to go after him and try to get him on this count and get him on the and died him here and indict him there. It just looks all political. As I've been saying on this channel for a long, long time now, you just can't go after your political opponent through legal means and try to sh shut him down and put him in jail or put him away or put a stop to him through legal means. You do that and you look you look terrible. You, you look like you're the one who's trying to destroy democracy. And that's what they, the Democrats look like. And that's the way it's come off. Uh, let's face it, right now in the polls, this is an astonishing thing. If you've been watching the polls, Trump is starting to gain among black voters. He's starting to gain among Hispanic voters. Now, why? Why is Donald Trump, of all people, who is, God knows, as racist and as uh, ungodly and unholy and, and against everything right and decent, how can he be uh, getting sympathy among black voters and among Hispanic voters? Well, it's because they look at him and they say, here's a man being attacked by the establishment. Here's a man who is being attacked by the deep state, as Trump calls it. Here's someone who is being attacked by the state, which we believe, and which among black voters, among Hispanic voters, uh, uh, there is a general feeling, of course, uh, that they are victims of a, of a deep state, of an establishment that is uh, basically prejudiced against them. And so they see this man being attacked by the establishment uh, being uh, attacked by the legal uh, uh, apparatus, looking at that, and they say, you know, he's one of us. He's a victim like us. There's the state is coming after Trump, just like the state comes after 
black people and just like the state comes after Hispanic people. Now, I'm not talking about everybody. We're not talking about uh, the majority of black people or the majority of Hispanic people. But if you just gain uh, considerable, like Trump has gained right now, they figure that about 20 percent of black people are, are polling uh, that they support Trump. 20 percent of black people, one out of five. Now, that's way more than the GOP has ever gotten. Uh, and among Hispanics, it's a similar number, uh, way more than the GOP has ever gotten because the GOP has never had any sympathy. But Trump is getting sympathy from a lot of black people and from a lot of Hispanic people. They're seeing him as a victim of a legal apparatus that is out to get him. And that that makes them identify with him. And so the Democrats, they couldn't have shot themselves more in the foot than they have. And, uh, and so when Trump talks about revenge and retribution, uh, many Americans identify with uh, someone who is taking on the deep state. Now, I want to read this news story to you. Uh, I'm quoting this news story. Former President Donald Trump is not a subtle man. He telegraphs his schemes, often in the middle of a tsunami of rapid fire misinformation. It was true of his attempts to overturn the 2020 presidential election, and it's true of his plans to use a second term to make good on all the autocratic dictatorial threats he has made since being voted out of office. Even more disturbing is how on board his supporters seem to be with the idea. Trump has taken particular umbrage at the multiple investigations into him and his company, framing any and every attempt to hold him accountable as a politically motivated attack. It's a classic case of projection given his numerous calls for his opponents to be prosecuted. But he suggests to his supporters that any revenge he take should he win in 2024 will simply be his playing by the rules that his enemies have set. At a recent campaign stop in New Hampshire, Trump went on a tear that said that the left has weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent, me. He said it was third world country stuff, and that means that I can do it too. Accordingly, his advisors are reportedly plotting how to use the Justice Department to follow through on that promise. His advisors have discussed sending the military into the streets to put down potential protests on Inauguration Day should Trump win next year. He reportedly wants to investigate former Attorney General William Barr and former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, who have been harshly critical of him since leaving his administration. Meanwhile, his allies have been assembling lists of lawyers who would back Trump's attempts to stretch the law to the breaking point in a way that many appointed during his first term were unwilling to do. Russell Voigt, a former Trump official and current pro-Trump think tank director, has been leading the charge to bring a more absolute understanding of power to bear in a second Trump term. The Heritage Foundation, the more established conservative bulwark, is working with Voigt and other far-right figures on what's known as Project 2025. Now, I've talked about Project 2025 in other videos. Project 2025, which among other things would result in a purge of career government workers, and a vast increase of presidential power. In other words, in, to replace uh, government bureaucrats with Trump loyalists who will follow Trump no matter what. If Trump succeeds in finding an attorney general who is able to get confirmed and is fine handing over the keys of the Justice Department to the White House, that AG would open investigations into Kelly Barr former allies who turned uh, against Trump, uh, more troubling and more damaging in the long term, 
is what such an agenda is coming to fruition would say about what American voters are willing not only to accept, but to demand from their chosen candidate. Trump is framing his campaign around retribution for slights against him, but he isn't losing any support for doing that. Now, nor, despite the multiple criminal cases against him, is his base abandoning him. No. Here's another news story, with, and this has some overlap with the last one. Donald Trump's talk of punishing his critics and seeking to weaponize the U.S. Justice Department against his political opponents has many people warning that he poses a direct threat to the rule of law and democracy in the U.S., Trump's talk of seeking retribution against foes whom he has branded as vermin is in line with plans that MAGA loyalists at right-wing think tanks are assembling to expand the president's power and curb the DOJ, the FBI, and other federal agencies. All of it has fueled talk that in a second term, Trump will govern as an authoritarian American dictator. Trump is currently the overwhelming favorite to win the GOP nomination for 2024 and has long maintained hefty polling leads over his party rivals. At the same time, a slew of recent polls has also shown him ahead of Joe Biden, including in key battleground states. And there is increasing evidence that Trump and his MAGA allies plan to tighten his control at key agencies and install trusted loyalists in top posts at the DOJ and the FBI, permitting Trump to exact revenge on his foes and shrink those federal agencies that Trump sees as harboring deep state critics. Trump has also threatened to tap a special prosecutor to, quote, go after Biden and his family. Trump's angry mindset was seen on Veterans Day when he denigrated his foes as vermin who needed to be rooted out, echoing fascist rhetoric from Italy and Germany in the 1930s. He, in other words, Trump was saying the exact same words that Mussolini was saying, that Adolf Hitler was saying. Stephen Levitsky, co-author of the book, How Democracies Die, said this, this is the one of the most openly authoritarian campaigns I've ever seen. You have to go back to the far-right authoritarians in 1930s Europe or in 1970s Latin America to find the kind of dehumanizing and violent language that Trump is consistently using. Trump's revenge game plan has been palpable for months. At a kickoff campaign rally in Texas, Trump warned, either the deep state destroys America or we will destroy the deep state. And he vowed that for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. Similarly, Trump pledged to a CPAC gathering in March that I am your warrior, I am your justice. The final battle is 2024. And on Veterans Day, Trump also warned the threat from outside forces is far less sinister and dangerous and grave than the threat from within. Levitsky said this, quote, U.S. democratic institutions are hard to kill, but Trump and the people around him are better prepared this time. Trump has learned how to purge and pack an administration with loyalists. Autocrats have to take state institutions and pack them, and Trump has learned from experience, which makes him much more dangerous. Timothy Naftali senior researcher at Columbia University said, quote, they're telegraphing a future authoritarian presidential regime. Trump is using Proud Boys rhetoric and glorifying the January 6th insurrectionists. He's promising them pardons. Trump's loyalists are looking for gray areas and weaknesses in the U.S. constitutional system to accumulate more power for Trump and for themselves when he is reelected. Trump is counting on having a more robust and experienced inner circle of loyalists, which will lead to more illegal actions and abuses in areas such as weaponizing the DOJ and FBI to go after his enemies on the left and on the right.
To craft a much more powerful presidency, MAGA loyalists and a number of well-financed conservative think tanks led by the Heritage Foundation and the Center for Renewing America have produced this almost 1,000-page handbook, Project 2025, which we've talked about, to help guide a second Trump term. Key components of Project 2025 include slashing funding for the De Department of Justice, dismantling the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security, one ominous plan Project 2025 has been weighing would allow Trump to invoke the 1871 Insurrection Act on his first day in office, green lighting using military forces against all political foes and demonstrators. Project 2025 also envisions schemes for changing federal service rules that will allow Trump to cut tens of thousands of civil service workers and replace them with Trump loyalists. Now here's another story I want to mention that goes along with this. Former U.S. House Representative Liz Cheney ripped Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel for dodging questions on Sunday about former President Trump's vermin comments, which Cheney described as Nazi propaganda. Quote, quoting Liz Cheney, when the GOP chairwoman refuses to condemn the GOP's leading candidate for using the same Nazi propaganda that mobilized 1930s Germany to evil, it's fair to assume she's collaborating. History will judge Ronna McDaniel and every Republican who is appeasing this dangerous man, Donald Trump. Trump is facing backlash over the language used on social media in a speech marking Veterans Day in which he pledged to root out the vermin of the country. Quote, in honor of our great veterans on Veterans Day, we pledge to you that we will root out the communist, Marxist, fascist, and radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country lie, steal, and cheat on elections, and will do anything possible, whether legally or illegally, to destroy America and the American dream. Pressed over Trump's comments on multiple talk shows, Ronna McDaniel dodged reporters' questions and said she would not comment on candidates and their messages. Presidential historian John Meekham linked Trump's comments to the fascist dictators of the 1930s saying, quote, to call your opponent vermin, to dehumanize them, is to not only open the door, but to walk through the door toward the most ghastly kinds of crimes. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign responded by saying, quote, those who try to make that ridiculous assertion are clearly snowflakes grasping for anything because they are suffering from Trump derangement syndrome and their sad, miserable existence will be crushed when President Trump returns to the White House. The Republican Party has embraced this autocratic dictator, Donald Trump, the rising Antichrist. And polls show that the American voters overwhelmingly now are leaning toward Trump more and more as time goes by. He, like I say, he has the big mo, the big momentum right now, and he's gaining ground, and Biden is losing ground. The Bible prophecies will be fulfilled. Dictatorship is coming, and it is coming worldwide. A comment that I got recently, I want to share this and close with this. I am not afraid for what is coming. This is a sister that shares this with us. You can see it every day, what is coming. We literally have about one year left and Trump will be president again because it is his destiny. What does bother me though is all the people that I love who will vote him into office and think that it's the most wonderful thing ever. And they hate me now because of what I believe. I've lost every one of them. You know, I want to say to this sister that sent this comment, sister, please don't despair. 
and don't be discouraged and be confident that God is not through with all your loved ones, not by any means, he's not through with them. Even though they are deceived today, this is also what is coming. True born again Christians will wake up. Those who are truly saved, those who are truly of God, those who have been born of the spirit, they will listen to the spirit and heed the spirit in time, even as many have already. Over the past eight years, I just want to testify this as I have many times before, but I want to remind you of this. Over the past eight years, here, receiving comments day by day, receiving emails day by day, we have heard from countless brothers and sisters. I can't even tell you how many Christian brothers and sisters who have come to realize the truth about Trump. They started out thinking he was grand and great and wonderful. Uh, and they have done a complete 180 and their eyes have been opened. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has opened their eyes to see what a wicked man this is and how wrong they were for supporting that wicked man. After he is back in power and he begins to apply all of his evil as the Bible foretells that he will, the Holy Spirit will open the eyes of all true Christians. Everyone will see. You will hear many people at that time lamenting the fact that they ever mixed politics with their faith in Jesus Christ. Many will be saying then what many of us can already see now, and the truth will be vindicated. And your testimony and your love for them and your prayers for them, you will be vindicated. And many will say in that day, thank you that you didn't give up on me. You kept praying for me and you helped uh, the Lord uh, to reach me by your testimony, by speaking to me and being faithful. And because of your witness and because of your prayers, uh, I thank God that the Lord opened my eyes. And uh, I see now what you were trying to tell me all along. So take heart. Take heart, please. And don't lose, uh, don't despair. And don't lose heart. Because uh, have faith and press on. All these things are going to take place. And they, they must take place. All the prophecies must be fulfilled. And uh, just remember, all is well with our souls. We are saved. We're on our way to heaven. And if you're not sure about that, I, I just urge you, please watch my eight minute video, how to be absolutely sure that you are going to go to heaven. Be sure, be absolutely sure. As God says in the Bible, these things are written in this book. This gospel is in this book. This, these great truths are in this book that you may know that you have eternal life. The Bible says these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. And so be sure of your salvation. Be sure that you're on the road to heaven and be thankful and be joyful because everything must be fulfilled, but it is well with our soul. It is well, it is well, and it is well that we are witnessing. It is well that we continue to tell others. It is well that we continue to upbuild and encourage one another on this journey. It is well that we exalt our Lord Jesus Christ, that we give praise and honor and glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is well, it is well, brothers and sisters.